February TBR. So as you can see, it's a little bit lovey in here. I thought since it's February, I might as well just decorate my bookshelf a little bit with some hearts and, you know, it's just Valentine's Day coming up soon and all that stuff, so I hope you guys enjoy it. Anyway, let's get on to the books I read in January. Now, January, I read eight books, which is pretty good later, so 2014. The first book I read was Along for the Ride by Sarah Dessen. This was a reread for the Sarah Dessen Book Club. I have a review on it, which you can click the book to go see. Um, definitely one of my favorite Sarah Dessen books. I gave it a five out of five. I loved it. I love Sarah Dessen. You guys know that. If you guys don't know what Sarah Dessen Book Club is, we reread we re a Sarah Dessen book every month. So yeah. Next book I read was The Impossible Knife of Memory by Lori Hoss Anderson. I think I mentioned this in a book haul and my most anticipated books of 2014. I love this one. If you guys don't know about Lori Hoss Anderson, she writes very deep, very thought-provoking books. This is about a girl named Haley and her dad who has done a couple tours in Iraq and he suffers from PTSD and it, it's all about how PTSD really struggles or really affects the lives of the people around you and it's very good very hard-hitting book i definitely say it wasn't my favorite laurie hall sanderson book that would definitely always be speak but i gave it a four out of five definitely if you're looking for a very hard-hitting truth kind of book that will kind of want to make you cry but you know makes you feel like you want to be hit by a tree or something definitely check this one out the next book i read is the testing by joelle charbonneau can i pronounce her name um I have a review on this book as well, but you can click the book to go see. It was okay. I didn't go into it expecting a lot because this book has very mixed reviews. You guys don't know about it. It's almost like, it's kind of similar to Hunger Games. Like, there were some aspects that were similar. It's all about being chosen for this thing called the testing, which is like a big deal and that's a good thing. And then people that go through the testing, it's very harsh and brutal competition and all that stuff. It involves killing and crazy things like that. Um, like I said, I liked it. I'm not in love with any of the main characters at all, just because I feel like there's just still a mystery behind them. So like a three and a half, honestly. Speaking of the testing, the next book I read was The Sequel, which is Independent Study, and I didn't like this one at all, really. I felt like the reason why I gave the testing a 3.5 is because the ending. The ending was a great cliffhanger. I loved the ending. I thought I was like, great, this is going to keep me wanting more. And it did. And then I read Independent Study and I didn't feel like it had as much action as it in it as it should have. And I know I get some people really like this one more than the first one, but I didn't. I just felt like it didn't answer my questions. I still feel like I don't know Jack about Thomas. Like, who are you? You're a mystery. You always remain a mystery. I just feel like the series is... But I will be reading the last one since I've already invested time into reading the first two. So I gave this one a three as well. It was okay. Nothing to write home about, honestly. <laughs> the next book I read is Premeditated by Jocelyn L. McQueen. And you guys know I've been talking about this one for a while. Like I've just, I've wanted to read it for a while. It's about a girl who cousin cuts herself about a, over this guy and the cousin decides to go seek revenge or revenge her cousin's like suicide attempt. And, um... It's like a revenge story almost, and when I read it, I didn't really feel like it was very revengey. I felt like the main character, I didn't really like her, I didn't really feel, I don't know, I guess it is a high schooler doing this, so I mean, I don't expect a high schooler to go in there and like be like very, very methodical and very plot, like, you know, have a good thing, like it wasn't very revengey as I wanted it to be. I love a good revenge story, so that's why I wanted the, to like this one, but I didn't. I just felt the writing was not that good, the characters weren't that good, it was very predictable. I knew who it was as immediately as when I started reading it, and immediately when the character was introduced, but um, I guess one two out of five. If you guys are looking for a good revenge thing, watch Revenge. That's a good revenge plot thing. That girl gets it done every time, but this one... Highly disappointed, honestly. <laughs> the next book I read is Miss Peregrine's Home for Peculiar Children, the graphic novel. And I decided to read the graphic novel because I kind of struggled with reading the original, with the real novel, and I thought this would be a great way to introduce myself to graphic novels. And it didn't disappoint. I loved it. I loved the artwork in it. It was very fun to follow along, and I felt like it did hit a lot of the plot points. A lot of people that love the book say this graphic novel is very close to the book, so I did enjoy this, and it gets me ready for Hollow City, which I will read. I gave it a 4 out of 5, my first graphic novel, and I can't wait to read more. The next book, well, I guess I read 10, no 9, I don't know. I listened to The Hobbit, the BBC dramatization, I can never say that word right. It was the only copy my, my library had available, so I listened to it, and it was okay. I knew that I wouldn't. I wanted to read The Hobbit this year, and I didn't think I was gonna physically read it because something about reading J.R.R. Tolkien books like really like put me 
Like I, very, I get very daunted. It's almost like reading George R. R. Martin. Um, so I decided like I'm gonna listen to it. It's probably the smart thing to do. Well, if you guys don't know, the BBC dramatic citation is not exactly a reading of The Hobbit. It's just kind of almost like listening to the movie almost. And it was good, but some of the voices were over the top and like when all the dwarfs got together, at, like it got very clustered. Like there was so much going on, like yelling all the time. I did like it, but lo and behold, I just learned that my library actually has an unabridged recording of The Hobbit, which I'm already listening to right now. So I won't be done by the time of January, but I'm still counting it in there. I love the story. I think it's fun. I think it's a really good adventure story. So I love that one. And the next book I read, I don't know if this really counts, but I'm putting it in there. And that is Find Momo, a photography book by Andrew Knapp. If you guys watched my latest book haul, you saw that book, um, cork book sent this to me. Pretty much this is about a dog named Momo, a border collie. And these are just f photographs in there. And you have to find Momo in there. It's almost like a Where's Waldo only for dogs? And it's very good. I love the photography in it. I'm a photography junkie and I just thought it was super cute with the dogs and stuff and I loved it. I gave it a 5 out of 5. I mean, super adorable. I don't know if it counts as reading, but I put it on the list. <laughs> The last book I read in January is Happily Ever After by Nora Roberts. If you guys don't know, Nora Roberts is an adult writer and this is an adult romancy book. I was feeling the need for some romance in my life. This is the last book in the Bride Quartet series and I learned about the series through my friend and basically this series takes place with each one of the main characters, or each one of these four girls that work at a place called Vows. Like one of them is a the wedding photographer, one of them is the wedding beggar, one of them is the wedding florist, and this one's about like the planner of it all. So I highly love this series. It's just a cute girly series. I mean it's predictable, it's all that kind of stuff, but if you're looking for something quick to read, something romancy to read, I definitely recommend this one. I give it a 3 out of 5. I mean I don't go into reading it expecting it to be, wow this is amazing. I just expect it to be let me get some cute feels and stuff. So it did its job. I liked it. That was all the books I read for January. There wasn't too many that really wowed me. So January was an okay reading month. But anyway, let's get on to the books I plan to read for February. So the first book I plan to read is Cress by Marissa Meyer. If you guys don't know about Cress, it is the third book in the Lunar Chronicles series. It's like a fairy tale retelling with a twist. So the first one, Cinder, was about Cinderella and how she's kind of half cyborg. The second one is Scarlet. That's about how it's that's about Little Red Riding Hood. And this one's about Cress, who apparently this is about Rapunzel, who is a super awesome hacker, which I mean, who knew about that? Anyway, I'm super excited to read this one. I bet it's gonna be phenomenal. This is an amazing series. I highly recommend you read it because it's awesome. I think the next book I plan to read is Ignite Me by Tahara Mafi. This is the third and final book in the Shatter Me series, and this is another series that I love. If you guys don't know about Shatter Me, it's about a girl named Julia whose touch is very lethal. Like, if touch you, you'd be dead. So it's about that, and it's got this huge love triangle going on. Anyway, but before I read Ignite Me, I will be reading the novella in between Bell Me and Ignite Me, which I think is for actually me, which takes place from Adam's point of view. So I will be reading those two. I'm highly excited for this book. I don't know how it's gonna end. I've kind of given up hope on last books and series because so many books have broken my heart before that now I'm just like, when I started, I'm just like, this is not going to end the way I want it to, so what's the point? Well, let's just hope Ms. Moffy keeps, I don't know, let's just hope Ms. Moffy, like, keeps all of us happy. I don't know, but I'm highly excited for this one. It's a great series. Definitely check it out. The next book I plan to read is Split Second by Cassie West. This is the second book in the Pivot Point series. The series was introduced last year. It's about kind of like supernatural. It's almost about a girl who could like not predict the future, but she could look like into, say she had to make a choice of going to different colleges. She could look into the future and see how each one of her futures would fare out if she picked a particular path. So she can look into the future to see what paths are different. So it's a very good one. I honestly don't know what the second one's about. I know it's not about her. It's about a completely different character, but I don't know, but I do love the series, so I would definitely be reading it. I have three other books that I plan to read that I actually own. The first one, that being Dreamland by Sarah Dessa, and this is the February pick for um, a Sarah Dessa book club, and it's kind of odd that we're reading this in February because this is probably Sarah Dessa's most, like, sad book. Like, she doesn't write sad stuff, but I think this one is, like, the one that is sad, so yay! Sad stuff on Valentine's Day! <laughs> anyway, this one's about a girl who gets in this relationship with this guy, and she just 
envelopes or stuff in it and I think he's not a good guy. I don't know, it's super short, I'm excited to read it and yeah. Next book I plan to read, I actually got this in my latest book haul and that is Avalon by Mindy Arnett. See, I'm doing well with the books I'm buying this year, I'm reading them ASAP. Um, this one I told you guys it's about, it's kind of like a sci-fi, I'll say that if you love Firefly by Josh Wheaton, which I never really watched, um, would like this one, but I'm highly um, looking forward to it and I just love the cover of this one, like, ugh. So sci-fi-ish. The last book I plan to read, which I really hope I can get around to because I really want to, is Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone, like last month. Um, I didn't read it. Gosh, this book is in such bad condition. I'm not holding up my new one because it requires getting out of the box and it's, that's hard. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, you guys know about Harry Potter. I plan to reread one of these every month and do that book kind of page to screen thing with that book and rewatch the movie. I planned, I, did, I was gonna plan to do that last month, but it just didn't happen. So this month, hopefully, I can reread The Sorcerer's Stone, then rewatch The Sorcerer's Stone, and then read a couple of those other Harry Potter kind of things, do a video about it. And I just really want to read Harry Potter again because it's been a while. I need to brush up on my Harry Potter knowledge, you know? That was the books I plan to read for February. Um, I would say vote, but I don't think I'm going to do that this month because I know for sure there's going to be a Nightmare review. I know for sure there's going to be a Crest review. I know for sure there's going to be a Dreamland review. And I know for sure there's going to be a Harry Potter. Maybe, maybe this will be the month where I review every single one of my books video-wise. If you want that, let me know. Anyway, what books did you guys read in January and what books are you planning to read for February? I just realized I didn't pick any lovey ones. Oh well, <laughs> love is all around. It doesn't, have to, it doesn't have to be February 14th, am I right? I will see you guys later. Bye.